Hello, everyone, and welcome to this tutorial for Vista Sculpt version 0.8.5. Today, I'll be guiding you through the process of transforming a 2D image into a stunning 3D model. When you first open Vista Sculpt, you'll see an interface like mine. Right now, the 3D workspace is empty. That's because we haven't added a model yet. If you have an existing 3D model you'd like to import and edit, simply click Import 3D Model in the top left corner. Vista Sculpt supports STL and PLY file formats. Now, if you're here to create a 3D model from a 2D image, something Vista Sculpt excels at, you'll want to focus on the panel on the right. This is where you'll load, adjust, and ultimately generate your 2D image into 3D. Now let's load an image to start. Simply click Load Image and choose a file from your computer. If you're using the Pro version, there's also an option to create images directly from text using AI, but we'll stick with the basics here. So let's go ahead and select an image from my computer and load it in. Now, if you're using the Pro version, you might see a prompt to enhance the image, but we'll skip that step for now since it's not necessary. With the image loaded, you're ready to generate your 3D model. But before you begin, it's crucial to adjust the parameters to get the best results. You can also make quick refinements to the image by clicking Edit Image if needed. In the Edit Image window, you'll find several options to refine your image. You can mirror, rotate, adjust perspective, crop, and more. For this example, we're going to use the new Expand Image feature introduced in version 0.8.5. Let's start by clicking on Expand Image button. Now, simply drag the arrow to select the direction in which you'd like to expand. Here, I'm going to expand both the top and bottom of the image. Once you're satisfied with the new size, click Expand Image button. This action uses two credits. Pro users receive 200 free credits each month. This process might take a few minutes to complete. With the image expanded, I'll now crop the left and right sides for a cleaner look. The process is similar. Just drag the arrow to choose the crop direction. When you're happy with the new dimensions, click Crop and then Apply. We can close the Edit Image and move on to adjusting parameters for 3D generation. Before generating the 3D model, it's essential to set the parameters carefully to achieve the right relief depth. The depth scale is key here. For a thin, subtle relief, set it between 1 and 2. For a deeper, more pronounced look, similar to stone or wood carvings, set it between 3 and 5, depending on your image. Since this image is a stone sculpture, a depth scale of 3 should work well. I'll leave it there for now, and adjust later if needed. The detail scale is the second most important setting, determining how pronounced the carved details will be. While high detail can add nice pronounced details, more isn't always better, especially with high contrast images like this one. It's also crucial to consider shadows in the image. If there are strong shadows, keep the detail scale lower to avoid artifacts and inaccurate depth in dark areas. With these adjustments, let's proceed. The simplification factor is automatically set based on your image resolution, so in most cases, it's best to leave it at the default. Higher values will reduce model complexity, making it lighter, but at the cost of detail. My suggestion, keep it at the default for best results. Next is the Z limit, which controls background depth. I'll leave it at zero for now, as this image has a close background. However, if the background were farther away, increasing the Z limit would help adjust depth perception. We'll dive deeper into this setting later with a more fitting image, as understanding its use can make a big difference in certain cases. The smoothing value is set to automatic by default. I'll leave it on auto, as it trims artifacts without affecting the mesh too much, preserving detail. However, if your model needs a smoother, rounded look, you can uncheck auto and adjust the smoothing level manually. We'll also keep Optimize polygons. Check to reduce mesh complexity while preserving details, making the model lightweight and more usable. 
For quality, the best results typically come from Ultra, which enhances fine details, but High also delivers excellent quality and generates faster. I'll leave it on High for now to speed up processing. Now we're ready to click the Generate 3D button. This starts the 3D model generation, which should take between 2 to 5 minutes, depending on the quality setting, image complexity, and your computer's speed. Now that generation is complete, let's inspect the mesh. To rotate the 3D model, hold the left mouse button and move the mouse. For navigation, hold the middle scroll wheel and move. If you want to lock rotation to a single axis, hold control while rotating with the left mouse button. Inside the toolbar, you can also select one of the three available preset camera view angles, top, left, or right. This feature allows you to quickly switch perspectives and examine your 3D model from different angles. Next, click the light button in the toolbar to adjust light intensity and position. This lets us see how the model interacts with different lighting angles, helping us examine the details closely. Now we can generate the side structure by clicking the Solidify button in the toolbar. This step isn't always necessary, but it can be useful to visualize the thickness of the mesh. Let's keep this first tutorial simple. Let's move on to the Scale tool, which is essential for resizing the model to your specific dimensions. On the left panel, you'll find the Scale tool with controls for each axis. To resize, Either type the desired value into the box or click and drag on the arrows, dragging right to scale up or left to scale down along the selected axis. If you need to reset to the original size, just click the reset button. To scale the model proportionally across all axes, check the perspective lock option. Now, any adjustments you make will automatically apply to all axes. To rotate the model, use the rotation slider on each axis or type a specific degree value for precise control. If you want to return to the original rotation, click the reset button, which restores the default orientation. After adjusting the rotation, it's important to click apply to confirm the changes. Until you do, you'll notice that the model's dimension text in the 3D view turns yellow. This indicates that the rotation hasn't been applied yet. You can also apply the original image as a texture on the 3D model. To do this, click on the Toggle Texture slash Material button in the toolbar. This will load the texture from the original image that the 3D model was generated from. Keep in mind though, that the texture aligns correctly only if the model hasn't been cut or edited after generation. In this case, since we haven't modified the mesh, the texture will match perfectly. If you'd like to return to the original mesh color, simply click the Toggle Texture slash Material button again. Additionally, if you want to apply a custom texture, you can click the Texture button in the toolbar to upload your own. Now, to export the model, go to the bottom right corner of the interface and click on the Export button. Here, you can select your preferred export format. We'll choose STL, as it's widely compatible and allows easy re-importing into Vista Sculpt if needed. To delete the current model, simply right-click on it and select Delete. For demonstration purposes, let's re-import the model we just saved. Click Import 3D Model in the toolbar, then select the STL file we just exported. Now that we've re-imported the model into Vista Sculpt, we could dive into more advanced edits like cropping the mesh, adding a frame, or even sculpting. But we'll cover those in the next video. Let's quickly recap what we've done today. We've gone through the basics, loading an image, adjusting key parameters, generating a 3D model, and exploring some essential tools. In the next tutorial, we'll modify the mesh further by removing the background, adding a frame, and exporting in a different format. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. That's all for now. See you in the next video.